Tina Struthers. I'm a visual and textile artist. I'm based uh, in the Montreal region of Quebec. And my art practice is sort of separated in two principal fields. So I create my own uh, studio arts research based art practice. And then I'm very involved in commissioned public art projects and developing cultural mediational community social outreach projects. Um, I'm very intuitive in my uh, creation method in my art practice. I um, love getting in physically involved with the materials that I create with. I, I really love working with textile and fiber based materials because it's so innate to it's so relatable to people all over the world and um, from the moment we're born we're wrapped up in cloth and it's one of the first ways we express our individuality is through the way that we clothe and dress and um, express our uniqueness in in a visual way and I love the way that one can manipulate cloth as a material to represent other things and emotions and feelings. And I find it creates this real connection with the viewer. Um, so, so yes, but in my practice, I'm very organic in my creation process. Although I really start with a lot of in-depth research and readings and my work very often touches on social issues, um, climate change, human impact on the environment. It's in constant uh, flow. Then this is the work I, I've been working on three dis distinct bodies of work the last six years. The previous work is from the series Le Flou de l'Or Bleu, The Flow of go uh, Blue Gold, which is all related to water use and sustainable uh, fresh water resources. And then this is actually part of the series Codex. And I have a third body of work, which I didn't include images just because we're limited in time. And um, this piece was shown uh, during the Triennale of uh, Contemporary Textile Art in Łódź in Poland in the last exhibition. And you can see here as well, I used a lot of reclaimed materials. It's, um, I used VHS cassette tapes, the inside little bits of cassette tapes, reclaimed denim as well, etc. And this is two more works from that series where you can see how I created sculptural works and sculptural forms. And what I specifically here started concentrating on is if you see the shadows underneath the works, and that's something that in the future, I really wanna investigate further in my um, art practice. And here's a small sculptural work. So another thing I often attempt to do is to make textile look like metal or really play with the textural aspect of it where it reads as a um, harder material and moves away from the feminine, feminine soft um, tactile visual expression that text, textile usually has. Um, now I'm going to present the Breathless series of works. These were exhibited on posters in March, as was mentioned. I'm going to start with a small quote. Um, Breathe deeply until sweet air extinguishes the burn of fear in your lungs. And every breath is a beautiful refusal to become anything less than infinite. So in this series of work, obviously it coincided with the pandemic and our fear of breathing shared breath or the air that's shared by others and then the sudden wearing of masks where we could not have the same intimate contact with our friends and connections but it also coincided with a bit of a personal history and once i've presented this piece the next body of work you'll understand a little bit more at the end of 2019 um i got ill and i was diagnosed with cancer and through my treatments part of it following chemotherapy was radiation therapy. And because of the location of the cancer, the radiation therapy 
affected one of my lungs. And for the first time in my life, I was suffering from severe breathlessness. And it's a very debilitating condition. And I was really considering how cells mutate and how our lungs mutate. And in the past, I've always had this fascination with um, or imagined how climate change and environmental change and chemical particles could potentially change cells and molecules. And through the pandemic, evidently, we were really reminded of this very vividly um, with, with this new um, mutation of, of the virus and it continues to mutate. So I was really investigating how people suffer from their breathlessness and how it really becomes an invisible illness. And also the concept of how breath enters the body and it's, it's actually something really intimate, inhaling breath. And then also I was considering the healing properties of breath. I had a very long conversation with um, both my oncologist and my osteopath at a stage. And we were discussing the calming effects of deep breathing. And through textile and fiber practice, through my research, I was really looking at the impact of slow stitching and hand beating and how that repetitive slow action actually slow down the breathing. And I truly believe that that reoxygenation of the body, but the slowing down of the heart rate and the breath rate really is beneficial for the healing process. We often express, I, I often express other themes in my work, but as to my, my intimate thought process, because specifically my work is very involved and it's very time consuming. So you spend hours in sort of a meditative state while you're creating and repetitively stitching, which really is, um, I go through a lot of different thought processes. Sometimes it's very, deeply personal and emotional and sometimes um, it's larger or more from a global context but I think one of the things that really speak to me and that I really often reflect about is what is the trace that I'm leaving and what is the trace that we are leaving on our environment and on the time that we're living in and how this fluidity or, or the flow of time changes and what the markings are that we're leaving and how that changes our environment. So I, yes, I, I think a lot about traces um, and, and what those traces, how they merge into the flow of time.